Welcome back. By now, you've taken a little time to think about what art is and have come up with a three-sentence definition of art. If you take a look at that definition, I think you'll find there are characteristics that are similar to other students' responses. Here are some of the common responses from past students. Art is often defined, in part, as the expression of thoughts and feelings. You may have included this idea in your own definition. I've also gotten the response that art is the imagination at work. Expression and imagination are both common words that arise from this exercise. Other words that pop up again and again in this exercise are creativity, entertainment, emotion, ideas, and skills, all very important factors in art. Students also often introduce the whole idea of the interpretation of art into their definition. All of these notions are brought up in a scene from a play you'll be reading this semester, Master Harold and the Boys. Toward the beginning of the action of the play, two characters, Sam and Hallie, are arguing about the value of ballroom dancing. Sam tells Hallie that he doesn't appreciate ballroom dancing because he's never seen two champions of the art engaged in it. To which, Hallie tells Sam that he doesn't really consider ballroom dancing an art, does he? Sam then asks Hallie the question that we ourselves are asking. What is art? Hallie responds that art is the giving of meaning to matter. Sam asks, nothing to do with beautiful? Hallie responds, it's more than that. It's giving form to the formless. There is, in these short responses to Sam, the very basics of what art is. Let's consider the classic definition of art, which is the creation of an object in the search for truth and beauty. The first definition is the creation of an object. Now, when we think of an object, we usually think of something that is solid and tangible, like a baseball or a flower pot. But in art, an object can also be described as an experience that has no tangible form. Then how can Halley's definition of art as giving form to the formless apply? Let's continue our discussion of the classical definition of art and see if we can't tie these seeming contradictions together later. The second aspect of our classic definition of art is that this object is created in the search for truth and beauty. Once again, we seem to be faced with contradictions. That which is truthful is not always beautiful, and beauty is not always truthful. In fact, it can be deceptive. So in the classical sense, what an artist is trying to accomplish is to bring these two conditions, truth and beauty, seemingly contradictory, together into a form that can be experienced by an audience. One time I had a student who defined art as anything beyond utility. I looked up the word utility in the dictionary and it was defined that which is practical or usable. So the student was suggesting that art wasn't practical or usable. Hmm. Is art practical or usable? I've asked students that question and many bring up the subject of commercial art. Commercial art is art that is designed to persuade an audience to purchase. In this sense, it is practical or usable. Here's a painting by Andy Warhol. Warhol was a serious artist during his time and began his career as a commercial artist and in fact used the techniques he learned as a commercial artist to create his own unique works of art. What about da Vinci's Mona Lisa, also a famous work of art? Which would you say is the better work of art? At this time, click on to Theater Task 2 and submit which of these two works of art you believe is the better and write in three sentences why you believe that it is a better work of art. After you've finished, click on to theater art video number three and we'll consider the influence of communication on art.